All right, AFC North team needs for the draft. Let's start with the Bengals. They have the 31st overall pick, drafting very low for a chains, and they have to be happy about that. Uh, they have gone offense with each of their last five first-round picks. They have eight total picks. They can't leave this draft without addressing what, Chris? I, I don't think it's anything on the offensive side of the ball. They added three starters to their offensive line in free agency. So I go, okay, that's good. You know, they, they lost, uh, you know, C.J. Uzoma right to the Jets, but they got Hayden Hurst, who's got some talent and potential. There's a reason he was a first-round pick. So I do think it's defense. And I look at it, and I think it's really I, – I want to say another pass rusher, really. That, that Again, we know Trey Henderson is the man. Hubbard is very good on the other end. But you look at their roster in totality, I don't see any one area to go, oh, they're desperate. Maybe if there was a big-time stand-up linebacker, you know, maybe you make that move. But, I mean, Jermaine Pratt, Logan Wilson, they're good players. They are. But I guess if I was looking at it, I'd probably go, man, if there was a difference-making pass rush DN there at the end of the first round or even the second round when they have picks there, that's, that's the one I think I look at more than anything, Mike. I still think the imperative of protecting Joe Burrow now and in the future requires them Another asset to continue or two. to yeah. address the offensive line. And a lot of it, look, defensive line or offensive line? Yeah. Let's see who slips through the cracks. Sure. On the first 30 picks. Let's see who's still there. But I think either line of scrimmage is where they need to focus. I don't but disagree I would err with on your the side of another either. body yeah. to protect Joe Burrow now and in the future. Whether it's because you need homegrown guys, you need free agents, you need a mixture. But your priority at this point, you got the receivers, you've got Joe Mixon, your defense is good enough. The offensive line is the clear liability where I wouldn't have any problem with them using all their draft picks on offensive linemen this year. I, I'm, I don't think you're – I mean, I would expect them to draft somebody in the mid-rounds for sure. I don't know if I think it will happen in the first round or the second round just because of so many, like we talked about, the assets and free agency. But I'm with you there. that you, It can't be neglected just because you got three guys in a free agency. No, no question that they need to improve that depth there. You know, they have another young guy and that they drafted in the second round out of Clemson last year in Jackson Carmen. So they do got that going, but – you know, it's. I don't think your thought's wrong there. Uh, you look at their roster and you go, damn, it's pretty good. Maybe corner two, maybe. You know, a lot of people on the Eli Apple, I want to go, everybody relax with Eli Apple. He had a good year. He played well. You put anybody on an island against Cooper Cup at the end of the game with no help, it was going to be a rough day. And Eli Apple, unfortunately, drew the, the short straw there. We could have put anybody in football on him over there. It would have been rough at the end of that Super Bowl. So everybody has to back off Eli Apple a little bit. And remember that little cheat to the inside. That's not something he thought of on his own. He was coached to cheat would, to the inside based so, on film study. Right. And that was where they ran the okie doke and Cup did the fade instead of the cross yep. and uh, and set him up with, with past tendencies of the Rams. Let's focus on the Steelers now. 20th overall pick. They also had the 20th pick in 2019. They traded up 10 spots to get linebacker Devin Bush. We know they will trade up for guys they like. They can't leave this draft without addressing what, Chris? I think a defensive tackle, Mike. I think that's where I specifically go for, for hey, it's the Steelers. They always got a beast in the middle of their defense. I know they got Cam Hayward there right now, but we're getting to the end here. Cam Hayward, I know he's still playing good. It's amazing. He's a freak of nature, but we're in what, year 11, maybe 12? Uh, it's somewhere in that category. I need to 12. look. 12. He was a 2011 first round. So you got to start thinking for the future. Stefan Tuitt, who's there, who's a good player, but hurt all the time. So that to me is the one area I look. I know they got some offensive line issues too. Um, uh, but they got Miles Jacket, linebacker. I, I guess that's where I look. I think it's time Pittsburgh starts thinking about uh, difference making defensive tackle for the next wave of the Blitzburg defense. I'll say quarterback if they love one of these guys. If yeah. they love one of these guys, go get him. There's been some chatter about Malik Willis mm -hmm. being the guy that they like the most of the available quarterbacks. Go get him. Do like you did with Troy Polamalu. Trade up and get him. Santonio Holmes, the Super Bowl MVP. Trade up and get him. If there's a guy you like, keep your cards close to the vest. But when the time comes, make the move and go get Malik Willis if, if you think you can, if you really like him because they can't afford to start into this post-Ben Roethlisberger period with quarterbacks who aren't 
franchise caliber. And if Malik Willis doesn't work out, you can you can try to find another one in a few years. The world has changed dramatically. That's right. Financial standpoint is okay. what you pay a quarterback on a rookie contract, even if they trade into the top ten to get him. It's not going to be a huge financial burden. All right, we got the Browns and we got the Ravens still to go in the AFC North. Draft needs. Let's start with the Browns. Disappointing year. Last year, they have added Deshaun Watson. That's basically their 2022 draft, but they still have seven picks. Two in round three, two in round seven. 13th overall pick was part of the Deshaun Watson package. They can't emerge from this year's draft without addressing what, Chris? Uh, there, there's. They have, to me, two glaring needs for sure. And I'm, I'm going to kind of unpack. I mean, wide receiver is definitely one that they need another guy. I mean, you, you're going to give Deshaun Watson all that money and make him the guy. It can't just be Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones. There's got to be somebody else there added to the group, at least in my opinion. The other one is you should get you get the defensive line, Mike. I mean, I almost – defensive tackle probably more specifically. They only have three on the roster right now. You could justify anybody, though. Defense to end, too. I mean, again, Jadeveon Clowney's not there. Malik Jackson's gone. Um, Malik McDowell, he's a free agent. I don't think they re-signed him. I could be wrong. But all uh, all of those, I, I just I look at that, and I think you know, those are the two positions that hit me the hardest. I guess I would say the wide receiver position is the one I look at to be the most glaring that they can't leave the draft with. But, but either one of those are, are a big need for, for me. Yeah, you don't want to have Quincy Avery, the personal quarterback's coach of Deshaun Watson, repeating his comment about it's a bunch of guys catching passes who otherwise would be working at Walmart. You need to beef up the receiving core. You've made the investment in Deshaun Watson. It's a fundamental shift in their offense. You know, they've got Kareem Hunt. They've got Nick Chubb at running yeah. back. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot more to justify the investment to Sean Watson. They need pass catchers, and and there should be plenty out there for them to get when it's time for them to make their pick. So I agree with you on that. Let's pivot to the Baltimore Ravens. They have the 14th overall pick. They haven't picked before number 25 since 2017 when they got Marlon Humphrey at number 16. Ten total picks, two in round three, five in round four. What uh, what do you think there? their key need is for the draft yeah they're you know i i don't mean to like sound like i'm repeating myself here but i i feel like it's time for them to go defensive line defensive tackle specifically calais campbell with the age he's at i feel like this is one of the first times really as we're getting you know through the all these eras of baltimore ravens football where they don't necessarily have that marquee interior defense alignment or a, gr a whole plethora of them to where you just go, oh my gosh, they're so big. They're unbelievable that way. So I guess that's where I look at uh, more than anything. I know offensive line, they could probably use a player or two there, but to me, a big time defensive tackle, interior defensive line of Calais Campbell, you know, those kind of guys, that type of guy is needed there in Baltimore. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, Campbell is back. I know, he but he's up there. In, he doesn't right. have a lot left. Right. Offensive line is an area. There's still question marks about Ronnie Stanley's health. And, uh, you know, the, the, the draft is a critical tool for the Ravens. Eric DaCosta, the GM of the team, made that clear last week. That continues to be their primary focal point for finding players who become the future of the team. And, and this is a team that I think on both lines, offensive and defensive, they, they need to get Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.